Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a locus problem with complex numbers. What does that mean? It means that we're looking for a set of complex numbers that satisfy a certain criteria such as this one. So we want our z, which is a complex number, uh, to satisfy this equation which is the absolute value of z minus i equals the absolute value of z plus root 3. We're going to be looking at this problem from two different angles and let's go ahead and start with the first one. So first method which is pretty standard for these problems for locus problems like this one is to replace z with x plus yi or a plus bi. a plus bi is the name of this channel and that's my first choice but for locus problems, since we're going to be talking about a graph on the coordinate system or the coordinate plane, we want to stick with x and y, which is more common. So, sorry, a plus bi, we're going to use x plus yi this time. So, if you replace z with x plus yi in two places, you get the following, x plus yi plus root 3. So, Let's remember the definition of absolute value. How do you find the absolute value of a plus bi? It is the square root of a squared plus b squared. In other words, it's the different uh, distance from zero when you plot it on the complex plane or argon plane. And if you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I made a bunch of videos about the basics of complex numbers. Just want to remind you that this is not about complex analysis, but more like complex numbers. And I have another channel called Cyber Math, which is more about real numbers, algebra, number theory, trigonometry, and a tiny bit of geometry. So cyber with an S. So how to proceed with that? Again, by using the definition, real and imaginary parts here, notice that the imaginary part becomes y minus one. So we're gonna consider that. And here, the real part is x plus root three, and the imaginary part is y. And imaginary part is just the coefficient of i, which does not include i in it, okay? So to be careful about that. And then from here, we can write the absolute values, the square root of x squared plus y minus one squared equals the square root of x plus root three squared plus y squared. Awesome. Now we're gonna go ahead and expand it, but before we do that, why not square both sides to get rid of the radicals? Let's do that. And then we can go ahead and expand it, but let's go ahead and write down the next step first. So without skipping any steps, and I would recommend that if you're new to this, don't skip any steps. So I show my work. And now we're gonna go ahead and expand it. This is x squared plus y squared minus two y plus one. Use the formula. Again, use the formula for a plus b quantity squared. You know, this is just gonna bug me. So let me just clear this up a little bit. Uh, 2 root 3x, and then plus 3 plus y squared. Now, good thing, x squared plus y squared cancels out, and we end up with something super duper simple. Let's go ahead and put the y on the right-hand side and the x on the left-hand side. So kind of switch sides, but then switch sides again. It's going to look like this. Maybe I should do it this way first. Negative root 3x is going to be 2y plus 3, minus one, that's gonna be a plus two. And now I can go ahead and write this first, two y plus two, but let me go ahead and divide both sides by two. That gives me y plus one equals negative two root three x. And then I wanna isolate the y because you'll see in a little bit why I do that. Negative root two root three x minus one. So this is the equation of our locus, in other words, numbers, complex numbers that satisfy the original absolute value equation will also satisfy this equation, which means that those are gonna be on a straight line. When I say those, I don't mean necessarily all the complex numbers, which we can talk about obviously, but the x and y values are related linearly. So uh, notice that this is a linear function so what does that mean? Well, this just means that, for example, if x is equal to 0, then y is equal to negative 1. And this represents 0, negative 1 or just negative i in the argon plane. So 
In other words, negative i is going to satisfy the original absolute value equation, which was the absolute value of z minus i equals the absolute value of z plus root 3. And why is that true? You can easily find out, for example, plug in negative i here, you're going to get negative 2i, and then here you're going to get the root 3 minus i. The absolute value of negative 2i is 2, the absolute value of this number is 2, they're equal, yes, this satisfies. So, there is infinitely many numbers, that's why we call this a locus problem, and all of these are going to be on a certain line or curve or any type of graph, which is pretty much this one, right? So what does that mean? It just means that you can graph it as a linear function and our numbers are basically going to be on that line. Make sense? I hope it does because we're about to start second method. Are you ready? Okay. The second method is very analytical and very geometric. So in other words, it's analytical geometry. So we're going to be using the definition of distance in the in 2D. Okay, what does uh, the distance formula mean? So if you have the absolute value of z1 minus z2, that just means distance between z1 and z2. And z1 and z2 are numbers, by the way. And of course, z2 can be real as well, like 0 or i or 1 or whatever. In this case, it happens to be i. So this, the second one, doesn't represent distance directly, but we can write it as z minus negative root 3. So we can express it as a distance. So the distance between z and negative root 3 is the same as the distance between z and i. Not negative i, be careful about that. So let's go ahead and try to interpret what this means. So I'm going to start by plotting these points. First one is going to be i. i is going to be here, one unit away from 0 on the imaginary axis. This is real. That is i. And then the other one is negative root 3 is a real number, so it's going to be like negative 1.7-ish. So it's going to be somewhere here. So now, here's what I want. I want my number z to be the same distance from these two points. Does that make sense? The distance between z and i is the same as the distance between z and negative root 3. So that means if you connect these two numbers or points and find the midpoint, which is going to be in the middle, Come on, no ability. So any point, obviously the midpoint is going to be the same distance, but that's not the only point. If you draw a perpendicular through that point, any point here on this line, for example, here is going to be because this is going to be like a midpoint, right? So kind of like a bisector. So the distance from, because these are going to be isosceles triangles. You know what I'm talking about? This is a right angle. That is, an, um, the base is split in, in half, so that has to be isosceles, which means the distance are, distances are going to be equal. You get the idea? So basically, you're looking at a linear equation again. But how do you find it? Easy. You first find the midpoint, the coordinates of the midpoint, and I'm going to leave it up to you guys to find out. Well, it's easy because this is going to be negative root 3 over 2, and this is going to be uh, 1 half. But you can call it half of i2 because it's on the imaginary. And then uh, from this point with these coordinates, you must find a line whose slope is the negative reciprocal of the line with this slope, which by the way can be found by uh, rise over run, and then you just go from there. Not too hard, but I'm gonna leave it as an exercise because this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.